Hello. Today, we're going to be talking about modular synthesis, modular synthesizers in general, because I'm about to make a series. This is going to be the first part, first intro part in the series, the modular synth series, where I guess if you don't know anything about modular synths at all, by the end, hopefully, you will understand more about modular synths and how I use them and what they're used for and what they even are. I guess some fundamental understandings you will have to have uh, is that modular synths are used to make and manipulate sounds. That's their purpose. Uh, does it by controlling and manipulating voltage in the modules there that then talk to each other or you get signals from one to the other with eighth inch cables like this. That's kind of like, that's all you need to know. Uh, and what you'll need is a case to house all of those modules. And these, these ones are Euro rack modules. This is a Euro rack case. That is a size standardization. So all Euro rack modules will fit in all Euro rack cases and the width of the modules are measured in HP, which is the units that you, the Eurorack standard uses. It's HP, all measured in HP. So when you're in a case, it'll be like, oh, this case is 90 HP, or the case is 82 HP. So you know that when you're buying modules, uh, you can only fill up that case all the way up to 82 or 90 or whatever HP that case is. So when you're planning out, uh, building your first modular synth because that's ultimately you know what you want to do it's what everyone wants to do everyone everyone's goal in life trust me is to build their own modular synth and uh, have a wall of horrifying lights that's what everyone wants <laughs> take it from me you know I know <laughs> but yeah you need you need a case and that's the HP that's the how the HP system works so you 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 know you, you got a module that's 2 HP you got a module that's 12 HP, you got a module that's 18 HP, you got a module that's 4 HP, you know, you add those all together up until, that's so when you're planning out the case and you're planning out getting the modules, you can do that, but it's HP, that's the, that's what your rack is, it's a size standardization, they're all the same height, but different widths, varying widths. So yeah, pretty much to have a functional modular synth, you need a case, which I got a three tier case right here, uh, and it's great, I love it. Uh, you need a case and you need power. All of these modules have to be powered. And you can see that there is a power board back there at the back of this uh, case. The case came with power. Some people build their own cases and install their own power themselves. And if you want to do that, I would recommend watching YouTube videos on how to do that because I can't help you uh, on that part. Uh, it's because it was easier to just buy a case that has power. So that's what I did. <laughs> I kind of cheated a little bit. But all the modules need power. So you need a case. You need a case. And you need the modules, obviously. Uh, and then you need power to those modules. And that's pretty much all you need. And these cables. These eighth inch cables that will ultimately let your modular synth come to life so we're back so because i forgot to explain some things about you know just the modules in general but in your case you will have many modules similar to this one this is uh the erica synths black hole dsp2 it's like a multi effects module so it adds effects to the sound that you run through it and it's got a bunch of different effects on here and those knobs control the parameters and those effects and you figure out you know those effects based on uh the documentation on this module now we're gonna get into that this is gonna be a whole video but i'm just explaining that here's here's the power you got a you got a power cord these, these are what the power power cables look like this one goes into the module this is uh what how many pins is that uh, 10 yep 10 pins right there and then this is 16, 16 pins on the other end. Okay. Now this, this will come with the module. Every module you get, you're going to have power with it. They're not going to not send you power. And if they don't, that's 
troll and they're trolling you. They'll send you uh, screws and a power cable. So basically you just need a case and then you need to buy the modules, but they will provide you with, you know, the things to put them in your case. So you won't have to worry about that. Or at least I did. If you do, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to explain that. And that goes, look at that, right there on the back. It, it, it'll sometimes already be plugged in, but sometimes it won't. It's easy. I guess this is something to note that I uh, probably need to explain. On these power cables, there's a plus 12 and minus 12 volts on these. And that's important, you know, for getting the module, the correct power, the correct amount of voltage, you know, I assume. But it's got this red... This red strip, I don't know if you can see that. Most of these cables will have a red strip or like a little red. This is like little red markings on that bottom one. And that's where the minus 12 volts is going to go. So you're going to look at the back of this module here. And you're going to see the 10 pins, which is where you plug in the 10 pins on that cable that you have. Because one side has 10 pins or one side has 10. You know, you got 10 right here, 16 on the other side. But it'll say up there, no, I don't know if that'll focus. It says 12 volt plus 12 right there. So you know that the red part of that cable goes down here. So in the orientation, like that, because the red's on the bottom, plus, plus 12's on the top. Look at that. Look at that, guys. And then you just plug it into the case. And I'm going to show you plugging plug it into the case. Bam, I'm back. All right. So you see on that power board back there, you also have the plus 12 and minus 12, and it's all labeled quite nicely for us. So that red, the red line on, on the, uh, the power cable goes where the minus 12 is. And it's, that's, it's great, it's great. So I'm gonna plug that in and screw it in. So I think it would now be beneficial now that I've explained all of that to just make a patch. We're just going to make a patch. Uh, it's okay if you don't really understand how the patch is connected or how it works. I'm going to talk through, through it, which is a very fundamental uh, talk through summary of what I'm doing. And I will go more in depth to all of these concepts in the future and all of these modules in the future in future videos this is just you know baseline gotta gotta get it covered gotta be like start at ground zero you know starting at ground zero so i love let's make this patch bam hello we're here at the synth and i am going to make a patch now now in order to make sound with the modular synth we're gonna need at least two types of modules we're gonna need a vco which stands for voltage controlled oscillator that's going to uh, create our waveform that we're gonna use to hear to it's gonna be our essentially the basis of our sound our starting point the sound that we're actually trying to get and the other thing that we are going to need is a VCA, which stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. We are going to send the voltage controlled oscillator signal to the voltage controlled amplifier to turn up the signal or down the signal. The VCA, Voltage Controlled Amplifier, or VCO, voltage controlled oscillator are both uh, components of synthesis because we need to create the waveform with the VCO and then we need to attenuate or control the volume with the VCA so that we can turn it up and we can turn it down because if it's too loud we want to turn it down if it's too quiet we want to turn it up that gives us our volume control and that will allow us to hear the sound because we could go out of a VCA into like, let's say an aux on a speaker 
and then you would be able to hear it. You'd be able to hear the sound if you, I mean, honestly, you could probably just take the oscillator directly out into a, uh, a speaker if you wanted to an aux input on a speaker you could probably go like bam because that's our uh, waveform output on that vco and then just plug this end into a speaker and you'd probably be able to hear it but you wouldn't be able to uh i guess control the volume well you would you'd be able to control the volume on the speaker if the speaker had a knob because i mean a volume knob on a speaker like this one down here like that speaker right there that's a vca and you turn it up and you turn it down, and that's what it's doing. We, you got a VCA right there. But you see, you've been using VCAs your whole life. You know, whenever you're turning up or turning down a car radio or uh, turning up or turning down volume on anything, that's what you're doing. So you're familiar, familiar with the VCA, you know, but now you, now you know what it's called. You know what it's called. So we're going to start this patch. We're going to start at the quad VCO right here. Now, this looks like a lot. This looks like a lot, but I promise you, you know, it's not because it's just a VCO, but it's four of them. It's just we got four VCOs, and you see that they are uh, sectioned off. Number one, here's the first one. Here's our first VCO, and they're all our outputs for the first VCO, and this is a input right there, but these are our three waveform outputs. We got the triangle wave, square wave, sawtooth wave. Uh, that's where we're going to get our noise from, you know, and we got the second one, third one, fourth one. We're just going to use one. So you don't got to worry about all these other, all these other nonsense, because we're just going to go out of this triangle wave and we're going to take that wave and we are going to put it into our VCA. So if we follow this cable, we're following the cable. There it is. There it is. Where's it going? Where's it going? It's going into our quad VCA, specifically into input one on the quad VCA. So this is just like, it's a VCA, but it's four of them. We have four VCAs. We have four inputs that we can input signals, and we have four outputs that we can take out the signals and do something else with them if that's what we wanted to do. But how this module works is if nothing is being taken out of the corresponding output, like because the signal would go input one, and then you would have your one, two, three, four attenuators. So it would go into input one, and then it would be attenuated however much you control this, you know, the one level one knob. Uh, and then it would come out of this uh, port right here. But if no signal is being taken out, of the output, it just goes to the right. And if no signal is being taken out of that output, it also goes to the right. If no signal is being taken out of that output, it goes to the right all the way to output four. Yeah, I think that explains it pretty well. Basically, all these inputs all go down and if they're not being taken out, then they get summed all the way to the right. So what's happening is we are coming out of that triangle wave into the input one on this VCA and we are going out of output four on the VCA, which is just gonna be our signal here. And that's going to go, this is the whole cable right here, it's a short one, into the input on this VCF. Now what VCF stands for is Voltage Controlled Filter. That is going to allow us to put a filter on the sound. On this one, this module gives us access to low pass filter, a band pass filter, or a high pass filter. And if you have familiarity with filters at all, uh, that's great. But if you don't, uh, it's, it's also, that's fine. They're not too complicated. A low pass filter uh, will roll off all of the high end of a signal based on the frequency knob here that you have that set at. A band pass will roll off uh, lows and highs and it'll only give you a middle frequency based on whatever, uh, wherever your knob's at for there. And a high pass filter 
will roll off the low end. And we're gonna hear all that in a second once I turn the synth on and plug it in because it's not plugged in. Okay. Okay, so it is all, it all should be hooked up now. So if we turn up the input one on this VCA that's getting our waveform, we should be able to hear that waveform. Also, also I forgot, uh, it's going into the filter here. And if you're only going into input one on this filter and you take the sum out, that's just going to take everything that's coming out of this module here, which is only this first signal. And that is going into uh, a stereo output module. So this is a module I got that gives me a left and right channel that I can input to it. And it allows me to take a headphones output and also send a left and right quarter inch output to wherever I want. And that's how we're hearing it. So basically to recap, to recap the signal flow here, uh, it's coming out of the VCO into the VCA, out of the VCA into the filter, out of the filter into our uh, output module that converts it to two quarter inches that I'm routing to my interface so that I can record it, so that I can put it in the video, so that we can hear it, so that I can hear it. So if we turn up uh, the first volume control on this VCA that our waveform is coming from, we should be able to hear that triangle wave. And look at that, we can hear it. We can hear the triangle wave. And we've got sound, we did it. And we are gonna hear what this filter does. Right now it's, a, it's on low pass filter. So if we turn this, it's gonna roll off, roll off all those highs until it's like real low. Now we can't hear it. Look at that, look at that. So that's a very simple, very simple patch right there. So out of the VCO into the, sorry, into the VCA, out of the VCA, into the filter, out of the filter, into our module that lets us uh, capture the sound or, you know, turn it into a quarter inch so that I can record it. That's the signal flow I got going on. And that's, that's it. You did it. You made, you made a patch and that's the fundamental basis of all patches ever. And I'm going to get into, get it. I'm going to get into the thick of it for sure in future videos explaining these modules and what they do, you know, my, my, uh, the re the, the way I use them, uh, various other things. And yeah. So yeah, that was pretty much a, you know, basic fundamental, maybe crash course in modular synthesis. Uh, if you want, uh, I mean, if you have any questions, obviously, leave them in the comments. Uh, you, if you're really concerned or itching, you know, for another type of video, let me know and I will make it, you know, cause right now my plan is basically to, uh, just make a video series on all of the modules I have and review them, review all of the gear I have, uh, make videos on them. And that's pretty much it. I got right now and piano. I'm going to start doing piano lessons like jazz piano lessons. Maybe I'll, I can do some basic theory, uh, lessons as well, as well as maybe just, I don't know, explaining how I play songs. I can do like song tutorials for some of these jazz songs I know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If you liked it, you know, great. That's great. And, uh, I, I hope you learned something. I hope you love modular synthesis as much as I do. Or if you don't, you know, <laughs> something like that all right thank you for watching Le you know give this video the thumbs up uh and <laughs> subscribe and do it all all right thank you bye